Okay, so um, I'll go ahead and walk through a demo of the software now. Okay. Um, basically, the main screen right here um, has all the test controls. Um, the test set does have manual controls. If you want to just manually manually run current, um, you would click on manual controls. You can enable them up here under view, enable, or disable manual controls. Um, so I can raise and lower the variac um, or the veneer, and that's basically the fine adjust. Um, the course adjust is whichever tap you have hooked up to in the output, and then the fine adjust is with this variac control. There's speed control, slowest to fastest, and again, this is manual operation if you wanted to just run current. So I can close the breaker in. I'll run the the output down so we don't trip the recloser. And I can turn the output on and then I'll get some current. Yeah, I'm running like 55, 56 amps. So that's the manual controls. For the most part, you'll be doing automatic testing. Um, so I'm going to go walk you through the procedure for doing an automatic test. The first step is to uh, click New Test, and I'm going to enter a serial number. I already have a serial number here. I'm going to change it to 2. So this is a serial number for the recloser I'm testing. Then I just need to fill in the nameplate data. So it's a hydraulic, a hydraulic recloser. It's a Lexington single phase type D. Coil rating is 50. Defaults to 100 for the minimum trip. Um, it's 2A and 2B. You notice uh, the pull down has the curves in there. This is from our TCC database. So this um, it knows that it knows what the curve options are if for for this particular type recloser. I click, okay. it, I click additional information if I wanted to enter some other information, like if I do a high pot test or whatever, I could put that in here. So I click OK. So now I've entered the, the nameplate data, so now I'm ready to perform a test. Typically, the first thing you do is run a minimum pickup test. So I click yep. min minimum pickup test. Defaults to 100 amps. Um, Detection method defaults to dip in current. Um, we have two different methods, dip in current and flat current. Usually 99% of the time the dip in current works, but occasionally you'll have a recloser where the current doesn't roll off far enough for the software to detect. So in that situation, you rerun the test and tell it to try the flat current method. And the speed defaults to the optimum speed. So I click continue. It's going to run the, the veneer down to the bottom. It's telling me to connect the recloser to tap number four. Um, that's based on the rating of the uh, recloser. I've already got it connected to that tap, so I'm going to click begin test to begin the test. It's going to tell me I need to close the main breaker. So I close the main breaker, turns the output on, and now it's going to steadily raise the output uh, voltage and current, looking for that dip in the current. And right there, it detected a dip in the current at 99 amps. So that's our test result, 99 amps. Okay. Saved result. So as you can see here, the minimum pickup result is colored green. That means it's within the 10% tolerance, which is 90 for 100 amp, 92. If I cursor over it, it'll show me what the minimax allowable rating okay. is, the 10%. So the next step would be to run a sequence test based on the four times. Um, as you can see, uh, my test title is four times. These are customizable depending on what test levels you normally test at. The default test levels are four, six, and 12, but you can change those to whatever you, know, whatever you typically use. Um, if you only do at one or two levels, you can actually remove a level or it supports up to five different levels. Okay. But the default is four times, so I'm going to leave it on four times. So that's where the 200 amps comes from. 
and that's what I want. So I click continue, and now it's going to raise the output up to a certain percentage. Um, and now this is, it's trying to guesstimate where it needs to raise that output to based on the results of the minimum pickup test. So after I run a test, I'll be able to dial in that position and save that um, result into a template so that the next time I test this type recloser, it can, it'll have that tap and position saved. Okay. So I'm going to go over here to make sure the recloser is still closed in. Yep, we're ready to go. All right, so all I have to do is click begin test, and it'll turn the output on, and then it'll monitor the current level, detecting the operations and recording the uh, trip times, reclose times, and the um, RMS current. <coughs> Okay, test. there's one thing, is this, is this uh, uh, waiting for a flat? Um, okay, well. Okay, yeah. So actually what it, it does, it, it just turns the output on and it then monitors the, the current flow. Okay, is this like a, when is, okay, all right, that's that's what I was wondering. Yeah. So and there's. This, is, uh, this has got a swamped front end on it where the current stays where the current stays uh, uh, at a certain level, it doesn't die off, correct? Um, I think you're talking about the, the compensation. The output stays consistent, but there is going to be the, 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 the decay on the longer operations. But since we're, we're measuring the entire waveform, so you can see here the waveform and you can see the current decay. So we're calculating the RMS test current based on the entire waveform. That's what this blue line represents. So our test okay. result for operation number three is 361, you know, RMS amps. And that's not an instantaneous current. That's based on, like I say, the entire waveform. So since we're doing how, how that, is that. How is, it, how is it maintaining the current then? Is it moving the variac as it goes? No, it's not maintaining the current. It's letting the current decay as it naturally would, okay. and collecting the data and analyzing the data and doing an RMS calculation so that you get it. You're getting an accurate RMS calculation um, because we're able, because we're using a computer, we're able to collect all the data. And, you know, as you can see here, you can see the waveform. So there's no need to try right. to maintain a current because we're not measuring instantaneous current. We're measuring the actual, you know, current for the whole operation. Um, so as you can see, all the trip times passed. If I click TCC here, it will show the uh, optimum and min-max for each of these operations. You want to see what, how it determined the pass-fail. And if I mouse over, it will also give you the same um, information. So if I click, t click test report, now I'll see the test report. Um, the nameplate information, and then also the test results. And again, the TCC information, if you purchase that option, is on the um, the test report. Okay, what is TCC? Time current curve analysis. It's it's an option that does the pass-fail on the test results. Where are these being made? The recloser sets? Yeah. Set, set, yeah, at our factory. Um, here in Accident, Maryland. Okay. But this is uh, this is all computer, can, like you said, computer control. The only thing that you have on there is an e-stop and a, a blinking light when the test is happening, correct? That's correct, yeah. Every, all the controls are via the computer. So, so, like I said, there's a template database, and that's what that's really helpful if you're testing the same type reclosers. Here's an example template database from one of our customers, and they they have templates for different types and different coil ratings. Um, and what they're able to do is save the tap and the veneer position. So once they get the output current dialed in for that 400 amps or whatever their test current is, they can save that. The next time they roll in a, this type recloser, they can use this template, and it'll fill in all the nameplate data and then it'll automatically position it to that location whenever they run the sequence test. 
So, you know, uh, depending on the appearance of the recloser, it gets them pretty close. Some sometimes you might have if you were if you want exact current, you might have to run it twice to dial it in, but it gets you it gets you pretty close close to the, the test current you're looking for. Okay. So once I've tested this recloser and I'm happy with the results, I can click make template. Um, and then I just give it a name and then I, I can change any information here that I want to, but it just automatically defaults to the, the nameplate data that was entered when, before I ran the test. And the 77% okay. is the, lo that's the location where we had the 400 amp test result. Well, okay. it was actually 375. So if I wanted to, I could save a template and say, uh, let's bump this up a little bit because we were, our test current was a little low. So the next time we run and use that template, it'll go to 82% and give us a little more current. Okay. Um, all righty. All the test results are saved in a test database, and you can sort by all these different options over here. So <clears throat> if I sort by date, then I can see the most recent tests. Um, I'm sorry, at the top. Yeah, so there's the test we just ran. And I'm going to go to mm -hmm. the bottom. And uh, so they have tests going all the way back to 2002. Okay. That um, looks nice. Yeah, that's that's pretty much it. Then you can do three different phases. It'll take save test results for three different phases if you're doing a three-phase transform or recloser. Um, and then again, I if I wanted to test at another current level, I would change the the rating to six times and then I would be able to save a whole new set of test results at that rating.